up and having my dad be a logger, you know, it's was, it was quite amazing to watch him, you know, cut down 18 foot wide trees and, you know, that just made me and my brothers want to pick up a saw and start cutting ourselves and, you know, me, me and Raph, you know, we almost became loggers, but uh, we started surfing instead. Two years. I'm 25 years old. I've been surfing since I was seven years old. My dad taught me how to surf when I was seven. He was one of the first surfers in Tofino. Back when we lived at the beach, um, we had a half pipe mini ramp outside of our house. So we'd just be, you know, we'd go surf in the morning. You know, first of all, you'd wake up, you just look out the front window, and you'd see what, you know, Cox Bay, Rosie Bay, South Chessman's, North Chessman's was doing just from looking out the window. So you'd, you'd go, usually go for a surf somewhere. We'd come home, we'd just skate on the half pipe. You know, you could see from the from the, uh, the deck of the pipe, you could see the uh, the surf. So we just, you know, between our runs, we'd just be looking at the waves. Is it good? Good yet? If not, we just keep skating. It was good, we just all get, you know, there's a whole crew of us, we just get all our suits on and just go up front and surf and then come in, skate till dark again. So once in a while, I'll make the trip into town and skate the park. Somebody said Five Mill was the first Canadian surf video, but, uh, there was a couple other ones made before that. There was this first one was uh, was called Cold Stuff, and uh, that was pretty sick, you know. Video eight, high eight footy, about a mile away, looked real good. We had uh, Skibucks, that was another classic hit. It was a twin fin, five four, round tail fish, and so thick, it was like a plank, completely flat. And then I'd see Sepp and Raph and Ryan, all those guys ripping and just, I didn't usually see them surf because I'd be surfing at Chesterman's when it was one foot and they'd be out at Cox Bay or somewhere else where it's bigger. So I didn't really start seeing them surf till I was about 13. But um, once I saw them, I started to realize, you know, what was possible. Just growing up skateboarding and snowboarding, you know, I think helped me, you know, for busting airs on a surfboard, because, you know, busting an air on a surfboard is one of the hardest things, and to have skateboarding and snowboarding, doing airs, or just combining all those three together, I think it really helps for, for surfing especially. Yeah, trying to get to like a, a spot and having to walk through the river during the spawning season when all the fish are running through. You try and walk through there and there's like two, three bears just sitting there looking at you. You just walk right through and you just keep eating.
Okay, we're ready to go. I was so hurt and my body was killing me and I just had to go to warm water so I decided to spend six months in Mexico and let my body heal from the cold.
even though there's waves here every day, we have to go through a lot of bad days to get to those good days. Getting a barrel here is a chore. It takes a lot of effort. It probably comes around maybe once a month. good to learn how to surf here, but once you get to a certain point, it's really hard to get better. You just have to be really persistent. Surfing in the snow is not very much fun. Usually when the air temperature is below zero, your hands freeze and your feet freeze pretty quick. It makes it pretty much impossible to do. But if the waves are there, you gotta go out and do it. Spread your little wings and take to the sky. I go to Hawaii because the waves are amazing. There's barrels everywhere and the water is 15 degrees warmer. Poker, 
Hawaii is really good. Pretty much every time I go there, I get my ass kicked, but it's a good challenge. It's good challenging waves, but even more challenging than the waves are the crowds. I love sushi. I love sushi. I love sushi. <laughs> brought up on sushi, well not sushi but seafood, it's from the ocean, you can pick it here and it's fresh, there's just so much of it if you know where to go, and you can just live off seafood and you know raw fish and scallops and uni and oysters and all the clams and all that stuff and it's just, it's just so good, it's free and it's the best stuff in the world. So good. First time I went up to Canada to surf, it pretty much blew me away. The conditions there can just be super harsh, you know? There's long nights and short days, and there's freezing rain coming down and sleet and snow on the beach. You know, the swell and the, and the wind and the currents up there are like pretty much nowhere else I've ever seen. The winter there is just frigid, walking through frozen puddles on the way to the beach. That for me was a new experience, man, dealing with that level of cold. I'm paddling through the whitewash and it feels like someone 
it's like throwing gravel at my face because it's so hard, so cold, so, you know, freaking, it's like, it feels like a brick hits you in the head when the lip hits you. up in Canada that haven't been surfed yet. The beauty of it is I think they'll still be unsurfed in some spots that'll be really uncrowded for a long time to come considering what it takes to get to these spots in the harsh conditions. For me searching for good waves is uh, definitely worth it. You know that these waves that you're surfing are probably going to be pretty much unsurfed most of the time and a lot of times you think in the back of your mind there's a good swell and you're back at home just how good those waves are. Another reason why I like being at home is the secluded surf we get. You go to these spots that are rarely surfed and there's nobody around. There's really fun lineups and some good waves to be had going on trips with Ryan's dad's boat and Ryan is their skipper, you know. We're pretty lucky to have a, a skipper like that and a friend that's got a sick boat to take us out. You know, a lot of times you can find good empty waves and there's not that many places in the world anymore where you can do that. I do think that we have our own little cold water Indonesia up here.
there's endless possibilities of Canada. It will last a lifetime trying to explore every nook and cranny along this coast.
The shrinkage is pretty mature. My hands are numb. I haven't even entered the ocean.